Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE Wall Review for this Monday, October the 1st, 2018, from the Key Arena in Seattle, Washington. We went through an okay wall last week, and after some interesting things that happened in wrestling this past weekend with Ring of Honor and New Japan putting on their own events in America, specifically New Japan doing an event in Long Beach, I didn't see that. I'm going to wait till it was on Access TV, but I did watch. Uh, Wing of Honor, Deppa for the Sonner, Lethal Osprey, amazing, amazing title match. And the Kobe event was good too. Wesley Hall was okay in Vegas this past Friday for Deppa for the Sonner. So, how is Wall going to answer that? Especially with this being the go home show before Super Showdown in Australia on the WWE Network. It was an okay show. It was good, some bad. Yet a shield dominant first hour, which I'll get to in a second. And then you had, uh, in my, my body, we may be the segment of the night and segment of the week. And then I thought I heard a crowd really loud react to somebody, like, really negatively, besides a woman. Wow, I'll say that much, but that segment, that happened during the third hour. Supersonic! Anyway! <laughs> so I had to say it. The song. That's, that's the only hint. Supersonic! Supersonic! Anyway... Let's begin with uh, Charlie Caruso interviewing Dean Ambrose. Obviously, it wasn't going to be his real-life wife, Renee Young, for obvious reasons. Because, of course, they don't want to reveal that we're really married. And Renee is on commentary. So, yeah, Charlie interviewed Dean, interviewing about his questioning alliance with the Shield after building the seeds for a possible turn from Dean when, you know, the seeds were planted with the Talk from both Drew and Dolph about saying that Daw Dean's been being used in the Shield. He's got no championships, blah, 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 blah. He showed his alliance with the Shield at the end of the night, but there's still some questions. And Charlie was asking him about it. And I did like his promo here saying that what 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 the Dogs of War did say, there were some troops in it. Yes, I'm not a champion, but I've been champion before my own. Do I feel that I am being used? Not exactly. You know, I, there's a part of me that wants to turn on these guys for make me clean up the messes and all this stuff. But I'm still going to fight with my brothers because that's what we do. We are a brotherhood. We're not a brand. Well, they kind of are a brand because they keep coming back every once in a while to make woman get over as a baby face. We didn't get to work. And that's where we end that segment there until Mary Goldman came out. Saying that Dean would be in action tonight. Getting ready for his six-man tag with the Shield against the Dogs of War. But has, is he going to try to betray his bros by challenging one of them to a title match tonight? Or choose a match against Braun Strowman? Brothers of career. So Dean was given a little bit of a choice to make in plotting more seeds. For the tension and the tension in the shield ranks. Bam him trying to stir the pot. Stir the pot that was stirred up by the Dogs of War last week. But Ambrose is like, Nah, I want option number four. You. I thought that was going to be an option. Till they had the Braun option. But Corbett's like, Okay, dude, you make me choose for you. You're going to get Braun Strowman tonight. So let's open the matchup. Braun Strowman against Dean Ambrose. Uh, I was thinking a little opener. Braun beat the crap out of... Dean, for the majority of the match, it was kind of a beatdown match. You beat him out on the outside. But then Dean did get to come back rally, and of course, the attacks to the knee, clipping the knee a bit. And he, uh, also, he chopped down for a sleeper hold one. Uh, not a sleeper hold, but a guillotine hold. He did, more likely, he did do the dirty deeds at one point to the big bad monster among men known as Braun Strowman. But then after that, they balled a bit on the outside. And Barnaby got narrowed against the steps. But Ball had to come back with not one, but two power slams onto Dean. He was about to do a third. And then, Dirty! Dirty! Bam! Bam! Reigns to the rescue. Taking down Swoman and inadvertently costing his brother the match. Yep, Braun Strowman won by disqualification at the strain when Strowman's enemy, Woman, got involved. And then both Drew and Dolph came out. 
No, I think they did. No, they didn't come out. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, everyone came out doing this. Yeah. We did see, uh, we did see, uh, Drew and Dolph come out later on after Rollins came out for the rescue as well, clearing the ring, double teaming on Strowman. And that's when we did, like I said, did see Drew and Dolph come out with Constable, Constable GM Corbin. Saying that, hey, Dolph, and Drew want some action? And apparently you do too, Seth and woman. Said you saw your brother wrestle. You're going to wrestle. Seth, you're going to wrestle later on against Drew McIntyre. But right now, woman, you're going to take on Dolph Ziggler. Now, they didn't say at that time whether or not it would be title matches or not. Until we came out from break and woman was willing to put up his Universal Championship because he's the fighting champion. But Corbin came out and said, you know what, woman? You're not defending your title. Since Dean refuses to challenge both of you for titles, or one of you, no title matches for Seattle, excuse me. Both your matches tonight will be non-title. Now, kind of like Michael Cole's commentary after this decision from GM Corbin saying, it's kind of bad for business that Seattle's getting no title matches tonight. If they think that's bad for business, then why is Coleman doing the exact same thing this Saturday? All of Raw's champions are in tag team matches. Raw's titles will not be on the line this Saturday. All of SmackDown's titles on the line at, in Australia. The tag belts, women's title, and the WWE Championship. Well, with one exception. The U.S. Championship. Still not, no opponent from Nakamura yet. But we may get Puyaka Puyaka 619 soon. With returning Rey Mysterio being the first wheel for you for Nakamura as champion since Jeff Hardy. So, so after that, we would have Woman and Ziggler non title now. And this was a decent match. Dolph did good here. Leaving some big moves. He did get the zigzag. And I think it was trying to zigzag. I, I know he did a famous there at one point. And he did hit the zigzag at one point as well. Dolph carrying the match with his big move on the outside a bit. But despite Dolph's best efforts, we knew the inevitable was coming out. The spear out of nowhere following a Superman punch in the one two three victory. Four woman reigns. Champs gotta look strong. Especially for the match at Super Showdown. So we had two out of the three singles matches involving the six men and the six man tag, both one and one. Strowman winning on a technicality. In a DQ way against Dean Ambrose and Woman winning clean over Dolph Ziggler. The woman match in this singles brawl will be, of course, set and Drew McIntyre later on in the evening. Speaking of hyping up matches for Super Showdown, we have two women who are in their own little six woman tag. The Raw Women's Champion, the Rowdy One, while well, the Rousey, taking on Ruby Wyatt, accompanied by the Wyatt Squad, and goes Ronda, accompanied by her Super Showdown partners. The bots, I mean the Bella trends. Nikki and bots, I mean Brie. Cause that was the big talk of last week involving Brie Bella deliberately, accidentally hitting the fuck out of Liv Morgan with the knees to the face. Need to face, need to face. And uh, it was reported later in the week that Liv Morgan was concussed and it was rumored that she was going to be taken off the Super Showdown card, but she wasn't ringside. And as of right now, she's apparently cleared. To wrestle this Saturday. Or maybe she's in the match and probably won't wrestle much at all. But she's still in the match for this Saturday unless they make some sort of last minute sneak attack before the match or something. But till then, the match is still on. The way it's scheduled. It's nice to see Liv at least out there. Dyed her hair pink. So there you go. Um, Rousey got. This body, like We had one match where she was like in the SummerSlam rematch against Bliss at Hell in a Cell. Bliss had more of the advantage for most of the entire match. Same with this. I've I've ever needed Ruby a shot here. You know, they, she she has a good offense against the champ, rolling on the outside of it, and then capitalize on the distraction from the Wyatt squad at one point. But despite Ruby's best efforts, some big slams, and even going for a Wyatt kick, the inevitable comeback from the Wall Women's Champion was coming through with the big punches, and even taking out Sarah Logan to try to get involved. She got physical, lived and not get physical in this matchup. 
for obvious reasons. You know, like, at least the let her go wrestle, at least be in the match. We don't know if she's ever going to wrestle in the match, but at least she's still in it. Like I said, live in the six woman tag. And then Wanda eventually would get that on board, locked in, and made Ruby tap out in an instant. So at least they gave Ruby an opportunity to show her stuff against the Raw Women's Champion, a beat in another non title match. But hey, maybe we'll get a real title match with these two eventually. Maybe an evolution, unless the Brella Twins turn heel on Rousey, as many people expected since they came back at SummerSlam. Especially Nikki. So we'll see what direction we head towards out of Super Showdown into Evolution. So nice to see Ruby get some opportunity. To look good, but the champ came out strong at the end. We're finally getting promotion for Evolution after endless weeks of them shoving Evolution down our throats. They have not promoted Evolution in a while, even though we're really close to it. And despite the lack of good ticket sales, they promoted Trish and Bliss. Yes, Bliss, who's also apparently dealing with an injury from Wanda Rousey, she's apparently going to be cleared in time for Evolution. She was taking up the Mixed Match Challenge, unfortunately ridding us of a Team Little Big reunion. We have Team Monster Eclipse and Mamoon taking her spot. But I do like the moment of Bliss here, with uh, Bliss saying that she was a young 70-year-old waiting outside the venue to meet her hero and my favorite women's wrestler of all time in the Attitude Era and beyond, Trish Stratus. I do like these moment of Bliss segments when she did this with Anaya Jax. Now she's doing it again with Trish. I like it. They did have a confrontation a few weeks ago. Maybe see more confrontations we had towards Evolution. Because I know we got Trish and Bliss. I know we got Lita against Mickey James. We also found out the NXT Women's title match, which will be Kyrie Sade and Shayna Baszler in a rematch from their match at TakeOver Brooklyn 4, when Kyrie defeated Shayna Baszler again at the beginning of the May Young Classic Final. From last year, of course, we have the second annual May Young Classic Final also at Evolution. So uh, there you go with that. Now on to a few that It's kind of interesting they're doing this this way. We have a single match involving Bobby Roode, and I was like, don't tell me, he's going to take on a member of the Ascension. I was like, it was Connor coming off a win over Jack Gable last week. It was another book in this feud here. They had two weeks of tag matches involving Gable and Roode, which they won both their tag matches. This is the third of the singles matches they've had. You know, with Gable defeating uh, Victor, and then Connor defeating Gable last week. And now this week, Connor would take on Bobby Roode. It was an okay match for him. At least these guys are on television, on main wall television, not on main event. Better than that, I would say. Anywho, Roode gave out some big moves, some big chops, some big spine buster. Even a big clothesline from the top rope. He was waiting to set up for the glorious DDT until uh, Victor got involved a little bit as uh, Gable was doing the Way to do the glorious pose with Wu from the outside on top of the steps. Got knocked off the step by Victor. Wu got distracted. Connor would capitalize on that with a big slam. A dominator and a one, two, three victory for Connor in defeating both Gable and Wu in two weeks. Interesting how they're doing that. Speaking of NXT teams who have been struggling with creative, the Revival, fresh off their amazing effort in the tag team tournaments against Drew and Dolph, Took on the team that was supposed to face for the tag belts until Drew and Dolph took that opportunity away from them. The B team. And it was an okay match. Revival looked good pretty early. Isolating Axel in the corner with great double teaming moves. But the advantage came when, of course, Bo Dallas got the hot tag in. Despite the hot tag, Bo was even set up for a double team move, a rocket launcher from the Revival, but then Bo would. Put his legs up, and that would be set up for the ending. Another fluke victory for the B team. You know, after the blocking the knees and the rocket launch, he would roll up Wilder for the one to be another surprise fluke victory for the B team. So here's Revival. Crowd was really behind them to win in a tremendous safety title match against Dolphin Drew last week. They looked really good last week, the best they've ever looked at main roster. What did they get as a reward from that this week? Losing to the B team. But the good thing about this was the beatdown after the match from the AOP. All oh, this a pain coming down. 
to beat up on the B team, capitalizing on their momentum after doing an impressive effort in the main event last week when he teamed up with General Manager Colbin against the Shield. Especially uh Anchor. He really looked good against uh Reigns in his moment of glowing. So we may have a triple threat tag team match to maybe have another one contender crown out of that. We'll see what direction they took. But uh, Baron Corbin did meet up with AOP backstage after that, saying, keep up the good work, destroying bodies. They didn't say, like, oh, you're getting a tag team title match, or we're getting a match with you against the other two teams you beat up. Nothing of that yet. So we may set that up eventually. So uh, then we would have uh, the contractual breast cancer awareness speech. Uh, we just got out of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and now we are in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We do have any pink ropes this time around, but we do have the pink women on the Titan Tron. Wait. And they had a like, special guest at ringside, including Dana Warrior, of course, the wife of the Ultimate Warrior. And I like these segments we had uh, with both um, Drew, uh, 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 answering Dean and Seth and Dean and Woman, after Dean was rattled, you know, questioning Dean, like, Dean, you okay? And he's like, man, you know, adding more dissension, saying, I could have challenged one of you for your titles tonight, but no, I'm a nice guy. I decided not to fight my brothers, but you know what? You can call us for my match tonight, Woman. I'm happy they kind of played on that by the fact that Dean actually lost. You know, his brother came to help, but he inadvertently cost Dean the match. Playing on the dissension, I was to talk to Seth before Seth would wrestle. Drew McIntyre, and then a little pep rally, some little dissension, with Braun Strowman talking backstage to his boys, Terry, Drew, get it done out there, and don't be a weak link, like Dolph, because Dolph lost tonight to Roman Reigns. So the woman match in the singles brawl involving the Dogs of War and the Shield would end up with the match of Drew McIntyre against Seth Rollins. And we need a match here. So good spots here. I love when uh, Seth was going up like a flip on the top rope and then Drew, Drew would capitalize with a big kick to the ribs. And they also did a, did a ball on the outside. Uh, Drew teased a backbreaker on the steel steps. All that would be brutal onto Seth, but he instead did the backbreaker on the apron, which was still as brutal. But the steel steps would have been a lot more brutal, indeed, if they would have done the backbreaker on the steps. So then after that, Wallace would have come back with a big buck buster and teasing his big moves like the stomp and all that. But uh, like I said, both guys, decent match up here. Falcon Arrow from Wallace at one point. Give the end of the match after the dominance of McIntyre. McIntyre would be picked up recklessly. He was going for the top. I think they were both going to the top one for something. And then Wallace would get the entire body weight of McIntyre upon his shoulders and delivered a big buckle bomb onto Drew. He was teasing the stump to burn it down. Burn it. Then Dolph's music hits. He slid in the ring and popped out of it long enough for Drew to capitalize on it with the Claymore and the 1 2 3 victory for Drew McIntyre. He's probably unfortunate that this wasn't a title match tonight. Thank you, Constable Corbin. Anyway, after the beatdown on Rollins, with Stormer coming down, both Woman and Dean would finally come out to save their brother, but they all got taken out by the by the Dogs of War, including uh, Warren's being taken down by the double team, Claymore Zigzag, and Woman Reigns being delivered by the Power Slam of Strowman. Dogs of War standing tall. So that means Shield wins on Saturday, right? One team stands tall. On the wall before the pay-per-view, or in this case, wall before Super Showdown, the other team wins at the event. So, see what happens there. But these events will hype up this this uh, match. But we hope these three, these six guys, stay away from each other for a while. But Woman and Stormin will, of course, collide at Saudi Arabia, and uh, there was a little bit of an edict of uh, edict from uh, Constable Coleman, but he did make both seven. Woman's matches tonight, non-title, saying that, Woman, you cannot defend your title until November. Which is, like, up, which is, like, irrelevant, because there's no pay-per-view after showdown until the Saudi Arabia show. So, 
So next on to the best segment of the evening. I love this segment. We had Elias and Kevin Owens. Yes, I'm mad Kevin Owens came back after a week. At least they're milking this deep Ambrose story longer than a week. Because they had a great opportunity to tell a good story of Kevin Owens critting. But he came back the week after. The only positive, he gets a team with Elias. And after a lackluster Kevin Owens show, which could have been a lot better, they made up for it with this segment tonight. Before Bobby Lashley would take on Kevin Owens. So Elias sat down with Kevin, about to sing a song, probably this in Seattle. But then came the reaction of the night, in the promo of the night, saying that Bobby Lashley was going to team up with John Cena this Saturday at Super Showdown. We cannot see Cena. These two guys teaming up don't make sense. It's like Seattle getting a basketball team. It doesn't make sense. Make it by the fact that Seattle didn't have a basketball team, but it left the state. That now plays into the hint I made in the beginning of the video. Supersonic! Because we had the Seattle Supersonics. Now they're gone. And apparently that struck a nerve because after that, Elias and Gale really booed out the fucking building for five minutes. Wow! You can call it whatever heat you want. They got Roman Reigns heat, Tomasa Champa heat, they had Vicky Guerrero heat. It was like, they couldn't talk over that crowd for five minutes straight. It was insane. It's probably one of the best crowd reactions I've heard in a very long time. Who would have thought this and the Supersonics would drive the crowd crazy? Rubbing salt in the wound of losing a basketball team really does something to sports fans. You know, you don't have a team anymore. And when someone makes fun of the fact you don't have a sports team anymore, guess what? It may well be the wrong way. They got me what Seattle did. And gay old Elias, I'll give him credit, they were milking it. They were soaking it in, you know. Elias didn't even sing at that point. They probably had to whiff a little bit after that because they were taken aback by the reaction. Even took him like a minute to talk again. Because they were just so taken aback by the reaction. They didn't know they weren't struck a nerve like that. And it was great. And then Leo Watts came out. As there was a salt chain of Super Sonics. Or Let's Go Sonics. It brings up Bobby Lashley. For his match. Against Elia. It's his partner. Bobby uh, Kevin Owens. A uh, decent match here. These two have had a little bit of a mini feud lately with Owens saying the reason he came back is because he wants to beat up on Bobby Lashley, the man that sent Sami Zayn home for the year with injuries. So, uh, Owens did well. Taking down Lashley a little bit before Lashley came back with his power moves and kicks. But then the outside, distractions came in as Leo Walsh was being chased around by Elias and almost, he, I think he did get Attacked by Elias, and he was going for a move, and then Elias would just destroy him. Dang. Big move there on the outside. Elias did the Leo Rush. The net distraction was just enough for Kevin Owens to capitalize with the 1 2 3 victory on Bobby Lashley. So Leo, after not taking any bumps the last few weeks, he took a bump for Elias and unfortunately helped his guy lose against Kevin Owens. And I thought maybe it was the Asina cameo. Even if he has satellite appearance, pull a lock on us. But nope, we'll only see Cena this Saturday in Australia. With the bad guys winning tonight, that means Lashley and Cena will likely win on Saturday. But hey, at least Elias is in a big time match with Big Match John again. But now on to a match promoting Mixed Match Challenge. Two women will be teaming up against each other with their respective men partners tomorrow on Mixed Match Challenge. Bailey! With, of course, Finn Balor in her corner, taking on Alicia Fox. With Jinder Mahal in her corner, of course, Jinder and Balor faced off last week. With Balor going up on top. Let's we'll see what happens this week with Bailey against Foxy. Uh, these little match. Here, uh, Fox gives some big moves. And then, of course, the big hug of herself. Bailey came back with some big moves of her own, including a big clothesline and a second rope stutter. But then the shenanigans happened where, of course, uh, Jenna Mahal did try to distract Bailey, but she kicked him off the ropes, leading to a sling blade on the floor by Balor. 
And Bailey would capitalize on all of that with the Bailey to Bailey and the one, two, three victory for Bailey. And that'll be your main event match. Your main event segment involved Shawn Michaels. Because I thought we were going to see something, uh, Dolph Ziggler's tag team championship partner and Drew McIntyre main event. But when they were like the second or third match in the second hour, I was like, so Shawn Michaels is the main event segment today. The only reason why you be in the main event segment is only because A, he's promoting Super Showdown for one thing between Trip H and Taker, and B, Trip H and Taker will show up. Because if they're not going to have Taker and Trip H show up in this segment, why have Shawn main event war for? Just because he's a legend? Anyway, we did see Sean come out for a main event segment. Talking about the match between Taker and Trip H that nobody asked for and nobody needed and wanted. But hey, it's happening. If you may be heading towards a tag match. With Sean coming out of retirement, this could be the setup for a tag match in Saudi Arabia with Trip H and Sean against Kane and Taker. Of course, Kane and Sean will be in respective corners. A Trip H and Sean, Sean's trying his best. His damn this! To sell this match that nobody asked for. That he's ready for Australia. He's ready to support Triple H. To beat down Tanker. And of course he and Tanker had a competition just a few weeks ago. And after that, and he's a good Sean comeback. Which is leading towards the rumors about Sean coming back for this supposed tank match. That could be set up in Australia this Saturday for the match to happen in Saudi Arabia. At Crown War at Crown Jewel. Should I say? So it ended by saying, you're going to have your brother, Kane, and your corner taker. Trip H is going to have his brother, me. Then the music hit of Kane. The mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, came down to beat down Sean, and then Tanker's music hits, and Tanker magically appears. Way to beat down Sean with a choke slam, and then Triple H would come out. Then he got beaten down by both brothers in the stretching. With Sean's hat coming off and showing his new short and bald head. Hey, he and Triple H all like brothers. They have the same haircut now, anyway. Ken and Sean would be in action in this segment here. Kane chokes, I mean, Triple H and Tinker. Tombstone with Triple H as well. Like they would lay off both guys as we end wall with Ken and Tinker on the apron. On the tight front, should I say, arms up as the brothers of destruction, like I said, stood all over the founders of DX. So, yeah, this match that no one's asking for, but the segment was an okay way to sell the match. The sell, they're, like I said, they're trying to damn this to make us give a fuck about it. Ooh, we're gonna bring Sean back. Maybe he's gonna be in a tag match. They're teasing something with Sean coming back, you know, like, like I said earlier. So, uh, there was that okay little main event segment at Ann Wall. And I said, they were not going to have Sean main event Wall if they weren't going to have Trip Ranch and Tinker show up, which they did. And also Kane did, too. So that is it for my thoughts on tonight's Modern Night Wall, the last one before Super Showdown. So thank you again for watching. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See you later. Bye-bye.